All right, letting everybody in. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're going to give everybody a couple minutes to get logged in. It's good to see all your faces. I see lots of familiar faces and some new faces. So we're going to give everybody a couple minutes to get logged in. And then I'm going to just remind everybody of our sort of Zoom rules and how we're going to do things today. And then we're going to do a poll. And then we're going to let our guest speaker start. All right, just a couple more minutes, just in case we have some latecomers. <laughs> Is everybody excited to hear about Tokate today? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think we'll get started. So I'm Katie Watkins and I work at the Langley Well Center here in Langley. Um, just gonna go over a couple of our usual Zoom rules. I know that most of you have probably been here before. So we're going to have a speaker with us today, um, Orca Network's co-founder, Howard Garrett. And so while he's doing his presentation, we will ask everybody to stay on mute. That way he can get through the presentation without without being interrupted, but then afterwards we will take questions. So you can either write those in the chat box or raise your hand afterwards, um, whichever way you prefer. And if you haven't already, but it looks like everybody has, go ahead and change your name so that it says your name on it. Is that Levi, are you raising your hand? Do you have a question? Go ahead. I, I, he was just raising his hand. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. No, no, you're fine. Well, that <laughs> was good it practice. Out. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you've got that down. Perfect. <laughs> um, we are recording this. So parents, if you're not comfortable with your kids being on the screen, um, you can turn the video off if you're not comfortable with that. Um, afterwards, we're going to be doing a letter writing activity. Um, but like I said in my email, you could do that afterwards if you wanted to take more time and maybe some of you already did it, but we'll go after that afterwards. Um, I'm gonna let my the rest of the staff that's here introduce themselves real quick and then we'll get started. So Jeannie. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Jeannie Hamilton and I am the new assistant manager at the Langley Whale Center and I'm working with uh, Katie and everyone and really enjoying it. So uh, it's my first time in the youth meeting online and it's nice to see everybody. Awesome, Cindy. Hey everybody, I'm Cindy Hansen. I do the education programs for Orca Network and it's really great to see all of you here. Thanks for being here. And Wendy. Wendy Sines and I have been the manager at the Langley Well Center for the last seven years, and Katie will soon be taking that position. And this is Felix, but I'll probably still pop on here for these because I just enjoy them so much. So <laughs> everybody for being here today. <laughs> and then 
Susan? Who's muted? <laughs> Muted. <laughs> I'm so, I see, I see. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm Susan Berta, um, the other co-founder of Orca Network. And that was just Rosie Felix's sister who was on my lap. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. And then last but not least, our presenter today, Howard Garrett. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Howard and uh, co-founder with Susan of Orca Network way back, well, we really started about 25 years ago and we started dedicated to this whale, to helping her come home uh, and making that case against all odds at that time, 25 years ago. And it still is up against some uh, pretty big uh, challenges to try to get her back. Um, so, I just want to say thank you all, kids of all ages, for joining in today, and uh, hope I can uh, inform and entertain you. All right, go ahead. Am I on? You're on. <laughs> do okay. you want to do the poll first, Katie? Or oh, is that yes, after? I'm sorry. Yes, can you launch that poll, Cindy? Sure. So if you guys, I think most of you have seen this before, but it's always fun to find out where everybody's from. So just answer those couple questions, where you're from and whether this is your first time or if you're new. So hopefully you can all see this okay. Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you're seeing it? Excellent. Nice. <laughs> oh, I see Noah's from Miami. All right, I think we have just about everybody. I'll give it another minute. And Lillian, Clara, and Willa are from Washington, D.C. I recognize your faces. We have several people who are here for the first time. So welcome everybody. All right, should we show the results? Yes. <laughs> All right. So most of our people are from Washington state, a few from the East Coast, and then quite a few people first time Langley Whale Center Youth Zoomers. So welcome everybody. Yeah, welcome. All right, now you're on Howard. Okay. Uh, well, first welcome everybody and thank you for joining in and uh, learning about Toki. Uh, that's what we call her Toki. Um, she was given the name Toki Day when she was chosen to go to Miami back in 1970, 51 years ago, uh, from the Seattle waterfront. And everybody called her Toki from then on, even though the stage name, the name they put up on the marquee out front and what they called her to the public was Lolita. Uh, we don't use that name. Uh, we use Toki because that's the name that she knows that the trainers and the staff there call her by. Um, and the, the Lummi people who are very much involved in and dedicated to bringing her home as a relative, as someone who is a member of their family, uh, have called her, given her a, a native name, Skali Chuktanak refers to Penn Cove, to a village on Penn Cove where she was, uh, uh, where she was captured back in 1970. Uh, so she has three names, but she knows, uh, she, she answers to the name Toki. That's what she knows as her name. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen uh, and, 
get started here with some breaking news. And this truly is breaking news because uh, it was a complete surprise yesterday uh, to everyone that I know that is involved in this to find out that a, uh, a Mexican theme park group called the Dolphin Company is uh, buying Miami Seaquarium. It's not a done deal yet. It will probably take until December and there could be some legal challenges. I'm not sure uh, because it does not meet the, uh, the code, the regulations of the Animal Welfare Act. Uh, so that may be challenged. Uh, I don't know that, but it's possible. Um, and uh, she, so she still is currently owned by the current owners, which are in Europe and very hard to contact. But this new company uh, owns a couple of dozen different dolphinariums uh, all over Mexico, the Caribbean, one in Italy, Argentina, and three others in the United States. Uh, so it's much closer to home, much easier to contact. Uh, but this is a complete surprise and we don't know what it means for her, how it might change her conditions, her situation, uh, her personnel. Uh, I hope it doesn't. I hope there's no drastic change. And I hope that uh, the new owners are going to be easier to contact. So I want to tell you about her. Uh, this is a very recent picture. In fact, it's only two weeks ago that Karina Makowski uh, went into the seaquarium to get photos and videos. She's still sorting through her three gigabytes. Uh, but she sends uh, this photo that shows her, her color, her contours. You really can't tell from looking at her if she's 55 or 15, you know, I mean, she looks like a very healthy orca uh, and she seems to act like it as I will try to show you. Um, but what I wanna do is sort of uh, flashback now. This is kind of like a, one of those movies where it starts with a very dramatic event happening to someone and then it flashes back to their childhood to shows the little girl before any of this happened uh, and all the events that lead up to this dramatic moment. And in fact, that's exactly what it is because that's what I'm going to be showing you. So Toki was born in probably 1966. So she was about four years old when she was captured. And orca babies are much more developed, much more grown than human babies are when they're born. Uh, for one thing, they have twice as long in their mama's bellies, uh, 18 months compared to only nine months for humans. So they're a little better developed, but also they just grow fast. They start out in, in a very aware, very capable shape and uh, they can hear, they can see, and in, they're always taken care of. This gives you the sense of how close they are, you know, how, how they're, they're almost you know, held tight by their mom and their siblings, older sister, uh, aunties, uh, others that might come in and just kind of help mom with babysitting, taking care of the kid. But they're always very close by. Uh, usually in touching distance, sometimes they take a little ride on the back of the mom or whatever. That's not her, of course, um, because uh, there was nobody around taking photos when she was born. The studies were started in uh, the mid-1970s, and she was born in 66. So really, there was nobody out there watching her exactly, but we can put it together, we can piece it together from everything we know uh, about orcas and about her uh, to uh, tell you her story from the time she was born. And there's a really interesting little tidbit, a little factoid here um, that I think shows uh, another 
way that she was very well aware of what was going on around her, even before she was born, because the sound in the water goes right into the baby before the baby is even born. Uh, there's no uh, barrier between air and water. It's all water that carries that sound. So she is listening in on her her uh, her family and the whole ocean sounds uh, even before she's born. She's learning, in fact, the particular system of calls, the vocabulary, the the acoustic uh, communications that her family makes to keep in touch with each other. She's hearing all that even before she's born. And, uh, you know, orcas, all dolphins, well, most of us really are pretty good mimics. We can, you know, hear something and make that sound. So she pretty much came out of the, out of the womb, out of her mama's belly, uh, making the sounds. Uh, she may not have known what they meant or, you know, really how to communicate, but she was making those sounds pretty much from the time she was born. And also learning learning everything, learning how to spy hop, learning how to, how to keep close to her mom, learning from her family, from her mother especially, everything that she needed to know, including how to catch fish. Uh, that's a skill, you know, catching fish isn't that easy. I've tried it, not so easy, but uh, she learned. And those about four years before she was captured, she was catching her own fish and she was sharing her fish. Uh, orcas have a way of sharing their food. Just a, a normal thing, usually it's the moms, you know, I guess they fix dinner and they uh, help to, to feed their, their young um, and others, you know, it's sort of a, a universal thing to share the food. Even a salmon uh, can be shared, you know, ripped in half and, shared with family. So she learned all of these ways of living, all of these sort of uh, courtesies and, and ways to kind of be polite and, and share with each other. Um, before she was captured, she learned all of that and it's all in her, in her, in her brain. And uh, well, about 20 years ago, this really landmark study came out. And uh, fortunately, the title is very simple, Culture in Whales and Dolphins. And they focus on the orcas, especially the Southern resident orcas that she was taken from. She is a member of the Southern resident orcas um, because they were the best study. There was more data, more information, more complete every individual documented every year since the mid 1970s, uh, all the births, all the deaths, everything absolutely uh, you know, documented. Uh, so they looked at that and they saw that, you know, they live in cultures. They live uh, according to what they learn. They learn how to be who they are how to be, in her case, a member of the Southern resident orcas. And that there really is no parallel outside of humans that uh, of any other animal that quite comes to that level of culture. Sure, there are other cultures that they learn from each other, but this is a complete, uh, the entire 24 seven repertoire of behaviors is learned from their family, from their cultures. And they are completely loyal, faithful. They never leave their families. You know, for orcas, they don't really have a nest or a, you know, a, a cave, a particular place to go back to. So their home really is each other. So they stay home. They stay with each other their entire lives. So it's really a remarkable thing. You know, that's been one of the, uh, the best uh, sort of side effects of talking about Toki is that to understand her, 
you really need to know about her family and about the species, about orchids in general. And so that is a very important thing to know about them, that they stay together for life. So that also makes it even more of a tragedy that she was taken away when she was about four years old. And I want to show you this. This is how it happened. And it is terrible uh, that it was a brutal, violent capture. Uh, they were herded with bombs in the water into Penn Cove in 1970 and uh, couldn't leave and the capture team set up these big corrals and they tried to get uh, a kind of a noose, a, you know, a rope around the young ones. They, they wanted to take the young ones that are, you know, easier to carry and transport and train and all that. But you can see by these pictures that the, 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 the mother, and we think that her mother uh, could be L25 Ocean Sun, that's not for certain, but uh, it's sort of logical that that's probably who her mother is. So one of these is believed to be L25 and maybe a, an auntie or another female, but anyway, they're on both sides of her. They're like bodyguards. They're trying to keep them from getting the net around her. But despite everything they tried to do, um, the capture teams, you know, set it up so that they could get in there and snag her. And that's what they did. And here is how she is now. She's really energetic. She does two shows a day. And each show includes about five different breaches or part, partial breaches where she really kicks up a lot of water and uh, she just has to do a lot of work to do her performances. And they keep her a little bit hungry so that she'll want to get that reward. So it's a routine. Oh my God, is it a routine? It's been so many years, the same routine. They may change it up a little bit, you know, every couple of years, change a behavior or, you know, they'll alter it. And sometimes she just won't do it. She just refuses. And it's not that she can't. She just, you know, she kind of says, nah, I don't, I don't want to act today. I don't want to be on stage. So she just doesn't do it. But most of the time, she does every bit of her routine. She splashes water on the crowd. She does the things that they ask. She knows what the signals mean. Uh, she watches. Her eyesight is good. You can see her looking at hand signals and, and uh, you know, carrying out her, her job, basically. Uh, but it takes a lot of energy. And what's really remarkable about her, and something that is very hard to explain is that she is so healthy that she can do all these routines that she has that much energy after all these years cooped up in that little tiny tank and you can see from that how little that tank is it's very small uh, this photo was taken by rachel anderson and you'll meet her very soon uh, but I wanted to show you this, and this is from an anonymous volunteer who went in and uh, made this little movie. And this is not in the show. The trainers are not even there. This is long before the show. People have not even come into the seating yet. And you can see her start to warm up and she's getting in her laps. So she starts to pick up a little speed. You know, it takes a while to build up momentum. You can see her, her bow wave start to build up there. And she kind of starts racing. She's using every square foot of that tank space to get her exercise. But she does it on her own. She does it because it feels good, like going out for a jog, I guess, because it's purely her choice to do this. So here she goes. She starts to really build up a bow wave now. 
And let's see, there she is. Okay, she's in the back stretch. You can see her just kind of streaking along. And now the water is getting really churned up and there's lots of big waves and, and uh, the dolphins are getting real excited. They start to race around too, there they go. And she comes around the back stretch again and then to the front. And now where is she? Let's see, she goes kind of deep, kind of kind of can't see her very well. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. She's way back there and you can see her turning it up now. She is really getting into full speed ahead. Ah, boom. Can you imagine how fast that is? Really going. And then, okay, she'll take a little breather. So that gives you a sense of how much energy she has. And that maybe it's because uh, it feels good, but it uh, helps to keep her in shape, helps to, to keep her, her metabolism and, and her energy levels up to, to do these exercises. And again, nobody told her to do that. That was all on her own. And this was from two weeks ago. And it's a great picture because it shows you her teeth. Now you hear a lot about captive orcas teeth are worn down that they bite the edges of their tank and, and uh, they just, you know, they're, they're so stressed, so nervous that they're biting things until their teeth are completely worn down. Uh, and sometimes they get infected and um, she doesn't have those problems. I understand there is one tooth somewhere. I can't really see the problem there, but uh, that did get, you know, has to be or had to be at one point, had to be filled. Uh, but uh, she is, she's got good teeth. That's, that's really kind of unusual for a, a captive orca after a long time. Uh, you don't see teeth in the very front. Uh, because orcas don't have teeth in the very front of their mouth. So that's perfectly normal and natural. She's being fed, looks like a herring maybe. I'm not sure what that is, but it's not a salmon. It's not uh, the fish that she would eat at home. She does get salmon a little bit. Uh, also it's melt and some other varieties, but um, mainly this shows you that her teeth are in good shape. Her skin is in good shape. Uh, she's basically uh, ready to come home. And this is Rachel, Rachel Anderson. She went in last October and spent three days. Um, she went to six shows, two shows a day, and uh, went in as soon as she could and stayed as long as she could and tried to spend some quality time with Toki. And one thing Toki did after she realized that this is a friend, this is someone who is just there for her, just wants to sort of be with her, is Toki started playing games. She gets a little bit creative, you know, she has a little fun and her fun was to spray Rachel. And of course, Rachel loved it, laughed, laughed. And, and uh, so she was playing this game with her and you can see Toki back there spraying like a water sprinkler. And uh, actually one of the trainers came by and said, you want me to get your picture? And took this picture. So that was kind of nice of them. Um, but what this shows and what this shows also taken by Rachel is how Toki responds when anyone comes to her and with a truly loving voice starts to talk to her. Toki, Toki, we love you, we love you. We want to take best care of you, care of you we can. We want to help you go home. Uh, just, you know, it doesn't matter what the words are exactly, it's sort of the tone of voice and she feels that. And so that's what she did. And so Rachel spent a lot of quality time on the, you know, beside the tank with Toki right there, just having these conversations with her. Uh, it was just a really beautiful time. And it shows 
to me that she hasn't lost it. She's not withdrawn. She's not in some kind of, uh, you know, stressed out, uh, you know, can't, can't see the world, can't see anything. You know, she doesn't just sink to the bottom. She does sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's a little quieter for her down there. But she doesn't just stay in any particular place all the time. And when there is someone there who relates to her, she loves companionship. She loves any, any kind of company. And when it's loving, caring company, she feels it and she comes over. That, I think, is a big key to how she can come home because if she is comforted, if she is cared for, if she is talked to and kept company the entire time, she'll be reassured. She'll be very feeling very safe and and that even though it may be very strange, you know, she'll have to swim into a kind of a carrier, a sling kind of a thing and be lifted up and put into a big uh, kind of a container that is half full of iced water, you know, because uh, the, the usual problem is overheating. So you want to keep her in very cool water. Uh, and uh, with all that and with someone to reassure her the entire time that everything is going to be okay, she'll sail right through. She won't have any problem. Uh, she won't panic. She won't get, uh, you know, nervous about it. She'll just sit there and, and uh, you know, go along with it. In fact, she might even remember that's how she got there. And that may give her a sense of, huh, okay, this is going to be a big change. I wonder what this is going to be. So, you know, she may kind of uh, be excited by it. So I want to finish up with this. Uh, and just as a way of uh, reassuring everyone that she can come home. And I'm going to go ahead and read this. Uh, orchids learn from their mothers and their family how to be an orchid. They are members of their family and their clan from birth, even before birth. They have very big brains, long memories, and nothing is more important to an orca than their families and how to catch their special diet. So she won't forget that. That is what is important to her. That is what she grew up knowing, learning from her family. It won't go away. She is and always has been a member of her family, despite now 51 years in that tank. It would be easy to believe that she can't possibly re remember her family, but we can't assume we know the limits of what she knows. So, okay. Uh, that is my basic talk. And I, uh, I see there could be some questions over here in the chat. Shall I look at them and uh, see what we've got? Um, I don't know if we have any questions in there. Does anybody have questions? You can also raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you, Howard, for that. That was great. OK, well, I'll be right here if anybody comes up with any questions. Questions or comments? Comments. I have a question. Perfect. Go for it. Why would they take orcas from their habitats? Oh, very good question. Why do they do that? Well, uh, because of all those people that uh, pay money to go see them. So, you know, they only have to pay a few thousand dollars for the whale and and uh, it's pretty expensive to keep a whale. Um, they have to keep their water cool, for instance. Uh, Toki's tank water is kept pretty cool, I think at about 65, between 55 and 65 degrees. But uh, so that's expensive. But they get, they at least hope that they will get a lot of money, um, you know, at the gate. So it's just a matter of uh, the owners making money off of her. That's why. 
that's a good question. Anybody else? Oh, it looks like we've got somebody under Noah's screen. Do you have a question? No, it's just, it's just a sister raising her hand. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> well, hi, sister. <laughs> hi. <laughs> All right, and you guys can, if you think of something in a minute, that's totally fine. You can pipe up then, but I'm gonna share this really quick. So the activity that I shared in the email was a letter. So one of the, the best and easiest way to advocate or to help Lolita or Tokte is to write a letter. Um, and this letter that I sent to you is addressed directly to the Miami Seaquarium where she is. Um, so we've got, gave you a little bit of history on there um, so that you have something to put into your letter and then you can add your own little piece down here. Maybe some of you already worked on this so you're gonna work on this afterwards. And if you didn't get that, um, you can go ahead and email me at katie at orcanetwork.org afterwards as well so that we can make sure you get your, your letter. But we also have a little bit more detail here that Howard gave us before today. Can everybody see that? So these are some of the things to kind of be thinking of when you're reading your, or where, when you're writing your letter. Um, so the Sequarium Well Tank violates multiple provisions of the Animal Welfare Act. Um, so one, the tank is unlawfully small, which I think you guys could see that. Um, two, she has no protection from the sun. And three, she has no orca companions, um, which as Howard was saying, they're very family oriented. Um, they receive an annual license to operate despite these violations. So we have sued but lost in court. So another thing to think about is according to the regulations, when a captive marine mammal facility is sold to a new owner, it should be inspected as a condition of the sale. So since it was also just sold again, um, this would be something to look at, something that you could bring up. Um, when Park Renudos in Spain bought the Seaquarium, we sued yet again, and that one's actually still um, pending. So hopefully we can get a ruling on that soon. And then in June of 2017, the Inspector General of the USDA stated that an audit of Lolita's tank found that it may not meet all space requirements defined by the agency's Animal Welfare Act regulations. So there's another contact number down here too. If you're feeling like writing two letters, this one down here would be a great one to write to. If anybody wants me to send that in an email afterwards as well, please let me know. I can also put this right into the chat for you guys. And letter writing is something that um, you can start now that will help you be an advocate for the rest of your lives. It's still one of the ways that a lot of us um, advocate for orcas in general and Tokate in specific. We have a staff member on here who that's a big part of her job, Cindy Hansen is writing letters and advocating. So this is good practice if you wanna keep doing this kind of stuff in your, work, in your life. So I put that address in the chat. Does any, has anybody already written their letter and you wanna share? Or is anybody planning on writing it after the Zoom today? <laughs> I did want to add that um, it is illegal to capture orcas now in the United States, although it is still happening in some other countries. So that is one of the good things is they can't, can't do this anymore. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Noah's family just shared in the chat, we have the kids in our community filling out this letter on Saturday the 28th. So you can either send it to that address that's on the activity sheet, the Miami Seaquarium, or this, or and or, you could do both, also send it to this address right here. 
at the USDA. And Howard, do you have any, um, any more to add to that if they're writing letters this Saturday? Uh, no, that's uh, the best way to do it. Um, and uh, we'll have the address for the new owners uh, for them to send to. Uh, it's the Dolphin Company and uh, they've got a website by that name. So uh, you can find their address, but we can uh, post that too. Um, I think they're going to be getting a lot of attention. They're going to be hearing from a lot of people very soon. Uh, they have the three other uh, dolphinariums in the U.S. And uh, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure put on them. Because she needs to come home. You know, it's been so long and she needs more room and more of her natural life. And so she really needs to come home. Howard, are they still doing um, demonstrations at the aquarium on the weekends? I don't think it's a regular thing. Uh, uh, like it has been for many years, it may start up again, uh, but you know, people's jobs got in the way. <laughs> they had to go to work. So yeah. that, that, that isn't necessarily happening every weekend now, I don't think. But, you know, this may stir up some more attention now that there's a, a new owner to let them know we're not giving up. Yes, and Paul brought up um, that they protest every Sunday. Oh, good. Oh, there, all right. Well. Send some pictures. I'd love to see them. Oh, you've been going once a week to sing to her. That's great. Mm. Looks like we have a lot of people on here that really care about her. Good. One of the Lummy uh, ladies released a video of her um, singing to Toki. Right. Back. Right. Yeah, they got as close as they possibly could on a boat uh, because they're out in Biscayne Bay right off of Miami. So it's very possible to come up close in a boat. And I, I think, uh, I'm sure that she heard when, when they sang to her. And we have uh, been out on the sidewalk out in front. Uh, there's a parking lot in between, but uh, out in front, uh, singing to her and even playing her family's calls to her as loud as we could uh, so that she'll she'll know that they they're still here and uh, you know give her a sense of what it's like to be back home all right guys we have a bonus video that we could share really quick if you're willing to hang on for a couple more minutes. It's called Perchance to Dream. But I wanted to ask one more time if anybody had any other questions before I play that. Well, it's a beautiful video. Just let me kind of introduce it because it's, it's an animation of her dreams, of her, mm -hmm. her life, her memories, you know, the harsh memory of the capture and but then also of her family and her sort of her her dream her wish to rejoin them and so it's it's just really well done so enjoy this
Sorry, I had to get out of my, my video. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Looks like you guys enjoyed that. So I'm glad we added that in at the end. Good idea, guys. All right, well, I think that's it for the day. If anybody has any questions um, afterwards, if you need any more details, just remember you can email me at katie at orcanetwork.org. Um, other than that, have a good day. Thanks, Thank everybody. Everyone. Hope you learned a little bit about Toki today. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.